Australians dependent on food aid. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, I'm Florian Heiser and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my stein of coffee and I thought we would go through the food bank hunger report for 2019. Because, well, if more and more people are dependent on food aid, that can't be a good sign for the economy, can't be a good sign for our civilization, can it? Remember, it's the 21st century, guys. So, I've got the report here. We'll have a look. We'll start it about this report. So, the Food Bank Hunger Report provides an annual snapshot of food insecurity in Australia. Now, we're just catching a glimpse here of, well, of what could be a growing issue, particularly with water here in Australia and the cost of farm products. So according to the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, food insecurity is defined as individuals or households having limited or uncertain physical, social or, or economic access to sufficient, safe, nutritious and culturally relevant food. Now here, the, the, the fact I'm highlighting nutritious because you find a lot of the stuff that is being provided by people from these well, food banks and charity organizations, it's long life foodstuffs full of sugar and vegetable oils, you know, and a lot of high carbohydrates. And with all of the deep diving I did, looking through low carb down under, down under changing our whole diet here in the family, we're now on a keto diet or trying to be, you know, with um, occasional bouts of chocolate, I'm most certainly breaking keto. But nonetheless, when, once you you look at that, you become quite critical of a lot of the food that people are eating because it causes insulin spikes and a lot of health issues. So we've got to see what they define nutritious as. I put money that are a bit out of date, but nonetheless. This report combines insights from two surveys, bringing together the perspectives of charities and community groups providing frontline food relief, as well as individuals experiencing food insecurity. Well, guys, let me know in the comments if you have experienced food insecurity and if you've had to depend on any charities or organizations. You know, please share your experiences. Was that a certain time in your life you had great difficulty? Did you come out of it or are you still depending on it? Remember, recently we looked at a video where I think banks are trying to help. Just I found the video I did previously. And this is where banks were providing or encouraging their clientele to go to food banks to get food aid for so they could keep paying their mortgage. Okay, this is from the big banks. Uh, I, this is from from August, just this year, not that long ago. And it it did turn into a bit of a rant. So I will link to that one uh, above here. And you can have a look at that. So there you go. The food bank charities partner survey was completed by charities across Australia that source food from the food rescue sector, including Food Bank, Oz Harvest, and Second Bite. The survey gathered information about each organization's food relief activities and beneficiaries. Now in its seventh year, this survey gathered 2,089 responses between December 2018 and May 2019. The second survey gathered responses from Australians who have experienced food insecurity in the last 12 months. This is the fourth time Food Bank has conducted research amongst those directly affected by food insecurity. The survey explored the prevalence of food insecurity in Australia, as well as the experiences of those living with food insecurity. This survey has con was uh, conducted in four stages between 1 July and 22nd July 2019, and gathered responses from a sample of 1,017 food insecure Australians. Okay. So here we go, you know, they about Food Bank. So Food Bank is the largest provider of vital food and groceries to food relief charities around Australia. Last year alone, it collected sufficient supplies to provide 210,000 meals to people in need every day. Food Bank distributes food and groceries to over 2,400 charities nationally, the majority of whom, 70%, rank Food Bank as the most important source of supplies for their organization. Food Bank also supplies foods for over 2,000 school breakfast programs nationally. Food Bank works with the entire Australian food and grocery sector, including farmers, 
wholesalers, manufacturers and retailers to address the pressing issue of food waste by redirecting product from landfill. Donations including include stock that's out of specification, close to expiry or excess to requirements as well as proactive donations of in-demand items. In addition, Food Bank collaborates with suppliers, manufacturers and transporters in a world leading program to source key staple items that don't come in sufficient quantities via rescue channels. These include fresh produce, cereal, milk, rice, pasta, sausages and canned food. This ensures the reliable availability of foods that provide variety, convenience, nutritional value and cultural appropriateness. In particular, in particular sorry, it secures food for families people with special health and dietary needs and school children via the school breakfast program. See all of these things, carbs, carbs, uh, carbs, fresh produce, that should be the cheapest thing you can get in canned food. So there you go. I mean, that's the thing. If you're in a, a high fat diet, you don't need as much food because it's more, well, it is more calorie dense, but they'd never discuss that with people, probably improve their quality of life. Food Bank also works closely with Corporate Australia to secure much needed funds and expertise to support its food relief efforts. So sustainable development goals here again with the sustainable development goals from the United Nations. I need to delve into that a bit more. So Food Bank is committed to the United Nations sustainable development goals as an approach to reduce poverty, promote sustainable development and ensure peace and prosperity of all people. Okay. The only way to reduce poverty isn't with an overarching world organization to reduce poverty. It is to allow the free market, the freedom to reduce poverty. Nothing has reduced poverty more in the history of humankind than capitalism. Sorry, socialists. You know, I know you, you want to live in, in, you know, the Soviet Union. I mean, they've got good music, decent subs, but they don't exist anymore. Okay, and they had a few famines right at the beginning. So yeah, I think I'll, I'll go through this in another video. The goal reflects values that Australians seek to protect, like a clean and safe environment, access to opportunity and services, human rights, strong and accessible institutions, inclusive economies, diverse and supportive communities, and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture and heritage. Wow, I mean, there's a lot that's said there. And all I see there is a lot of stuff that's going to be used to discriminate against people, to advantage one group over another. It really just screams of identity politics there. And I'm really wary about all of this. I'm really wary about a lot of the stuff there because the problem is whenever you, you know, try and do something good, you usually do something bad. Food banks activities play a direct role in delivering a number of the goals in Australia, and particularly Food Bank is achieving goals to zero hunger, which aims to end food insecurity. Everyone in Australia should have enough safe and nutritious food to thrive. A country with zero hunger can positively impact the economy, health, education, equality and social development. Achieving zero hunger is fundamental to building a better future for everyone. Okay, we have a lot of food. It'll be interesting to see why people are going hungry. Food Bank also has a major role in Goal 12, responsible consumption and production. In particular, Food Bank is pivotal to 12.3, halving food waste by 2030. Around a third of all food produced for human consumption is lost or wasted from the farm to the fork. This huge level of inefficiency has economic, social and environmental impacts, which can reduce, which can be reduced for the benefit of all. But do you want a central organization to do that? I mean, it's a noble goal. The market will address it. The market will address it. Remember, remember, we've got a potato board in Victoria or in Western Australia. We did have that restricted access to food product, you know, to control it, to ensure there wasn't any waste or any flooding of the market. Okay. That's the thing. That's where these things can sound good, but you have to play devil's advocate and see how it can, how it can, you know, have unintended consequences unintended consequences. So the executive summary, despite Australia's reputation as a wealthy country, food insecurity is a real, it's a reality, sorry, for an increasing number of people. So food insecurity is increasing. In the last year, more than one in five Australians, 
have been in a situation where they have, have run out of food and been unable to buy more. That is the equivalent of 5 million people. At least once a week, around half of these people skip a meal or cut on the, down on the size of their meals to make food go further. At least once a week, 3 in 10 food in food sorry, 3 in 10 food insecure Australians go a whole day without eating. Now, the other day I, I went a whole day without eating. I did it to fast. I usually fast for, well, for a week at a time. This time I only did a day. Um, to uh, get cellular autophagy going and as a cleansing. And there's also already the one meal a day crowd. Because you have to realize humans didn't eat every three hours in a hunter-gatherer civilization or in previous times. It is a result of a modern, well, insane abundance that we now have this expectation to eat every few hours. Boom, boom, boom. And the problem is what we're eating as well is ensuring that we have, you know, that we are hungry all the time because we're you know, living off carbohydrates. We're not living off the fat in our bodies. Every month, the charity, sorry, the charities that work with Food Bank provide relief to over 815,000 Australians experiencing food insecurity. Despite this huge effort, charities are struggling to keep up with demand. Over the past 12 months, the number of people seeking food relief has increased by 22%. Less than two in five charities believe they are currently meeting the full needs of the people they assist. So there you go, in 12 months, it's increased by 22%. So women bear the brunt of food insecurity. Women are at a greater risk of food insecurity and also feel the impacts more strongly than men. More than one in four women in Australia, 27%, have experienced food insecurity in the last 12 months. This compares with 18% of men. The experience of food insecurity can look quite different for women and men. The female experience is often characterized by high levels of emotional strain, with women more likely to say they feel anxious, 49% compared to 37% men, and stressed, 58% compared to 47% males as a result of food insecurity. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that 100%. You know, you've got to realize, guys, this is more evidence that there is biological fundamental differences between the sexes you know it affects how we think how we respond and that's nature that's nature and i know rachel she's more worried about food security than i am you know it's easier for me to fast than it is for her that's my, one of my tips for saving money just don't eat don't eat go a week without food just have water see if you can do it a lot of fat people in the country they could Seek your own independent professional and medical advice. Don't just listen to a face on YouTube. So mothers experiencing food insecurity are twice as likely as fathers to feel like a bad parent when there is not enough food in the house. 58% of mothers strongly agree compared to 26% of fathers. Well, yeah, I guess. The events that make women vulnerable to food insecurity can also look different. Women experiencing food insecurity are more likely than men to have experienced domestic violence in their lifetime, 53% compared to 32%. They're also more likely to have raised children on their own for an extended period of time, 49% compared to 28% of men. So Australians with a history of personal hardship are more vulnerable to food insecurity. Unexpected bills or housing payments are often the immediate reason an individual goes hungry. Almost half of Australians who have experienced food insecurity in the last year, 49% have gone hungry because of an unexpected bill or expense. Two in five, so this means people are living paycheck to paycheck. Two in five, 42% have experienced food insecurity because they are living on a low income or pension. Or one in three, 34% have gone without food so they can pay their rent or mortgage repayments. Well, that's exactly like what we're told here. The banks are encouraging people to get food handouts so they can pay their mortgage. So they can pay their mortgage. So this means people don't have enough savings. They don't have enough savings for unexpected bills to, and food is something that cuts. I mean, food is one of the last things you'd want to cut. And um, we also looked at another video recently about the 
well, the large bonuses paid to civil servants here in Queensland who regulate the provision of groceries to indigenous remote communities, you know, to make them more affordable. And they are doing a pretty bad job. What do you think would have would be better at providing more affordable foodstuffs to people? The government, you know, organizing it or Aldi? Who do you think's better? Who do you think's better? And I will just raise my Stein drinking my Aldi coffee while you think about that one and let me know in the comments. <sighs> okay. However, there may also be more complex factors at work in a person's life which lead to food insecurity. For example, 7 in 10 Australians experiencing food insecurity, 70%, have been unable to find a job for an extended period at some point in their lives. 2 in 5, 42%, have experienced domestic violence, while 38% have raised children. We've already read this. Experiencing hardship can make an individual vulnerable to food insecurity in the short term, but can also have lasting emotional, financial, and physical effects, which make it difficult to get back on track. Or, yeah, trauma. Food insecurity can, can cause a significant decline in mental health. Being, uh, being unable to afford enough food takes a significant toll on a person's physical health. With almost half of Australians struggling with food insecurity. 47% feeling tired or lethargic as a result of not having enough food. But food insecurity can also have a devastating effect on an individual's mental health. This is, this is one reason why I suggest people get comfortable with the idea of fasting for extended periods, if they can. Because then if, yeah, if you're in trouble and you don't have any money, you know you can go time without food, and you know you're not going to suffer. Australians uh, struggling with food insecurity are much more likely to experience high or very high levels of psychological distress than the average Australian. 7 in 10 food insecure Australians experience high or very high levels of psychological distress compared to only 13% of the general population. Well, that's, that's absolutely no surprise. That makes a lot of sense. Almost 3 in 5 Australians experiencing food insecurity, 58%, have sought assistance from a charity at least once in the last 12 months. While the main benefit of receiving food relief is feeling less hungry, many Australians experiencing food insecurity have also noticed improvements in their mental well-being. 1 in 3 say their mental health has improved as a result of receiving assistance, or one in four say they're able to focus and concentrate better. Well, there you go. A snapshot of food insecurity in Australia. Let's have a look. More than one in five Australians are at least once a week, and children represent 22% of food insecurity. And this is the biggest, uh, this is going to have a lasting impact, the children. It's happening in Venezuela. You know, and the fact is that if your children don't have access to to food, then you're going to well, potentially stunt their mental development over the their whole lives. So women bear the brunt of food insecurity. Women are 1.5 times more likely than men to experience food insecurity. So food insecurity. Australians are five times as likely to experience psychological distress than the average Australian. Yep. Food relief. Food bank provides 850,000 meals and the age breakdown of Australians re receiving food relief. So the biggest one is in the 40 to 64 year old, year old age bracket, 43%. I bet you that's the one that has the biggest trouble finding work. So charities are struggling to meet the rising need for food relief. 22% increase in the individual seeking it and 37% of the charities. In this video here also, I mean, whenever the power bill comes in, and power is bloody is from South Australia, and power is very expensive in South Australia for, for some strange reason. I don't know why. And uh, when the power bill comes in, that's when people go to the food bank. So, the reality of food insecurity in Australia. See, I think a whole lot of this could be addressed by changing the way people eat. I mean, this is all processed garbage. It's all full of sugar. It's not going to satiate you for an extended period of time. You know. This, this this stuff, you'll, you'll be hungry in an hour. You'll be hungry in an hour. You're better eating something else, something with a higher fat content, a higher calorific content that can satiate you for an extended period. But they're not talking about those type of things because this entire organization is probably just dependent on the government guidelines for health, which, or dietary guidelines, which are really out of date, which are really out of date. So the reality of food insecurity in Australia, one in five Australians, yep, we've read that in the last 12 months. Um, 
These Australians may be dealing with a range of circumstances. So 50% cut down on the size of the meals, 55% skip a meal, 30% go whole day without eating. I mean, none of these things I have any issue with at all. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with skipping a meal. But you have to understand I'm approaching this from a completely different dietary perspective. The way I eat is not the same as, as the normal people here and the, the diet they're getting. Uh, and so I get less hungry. I get simply less hungry. When you first go to keto from a conventional diet, from the standard Australian diet, you can forget to eat. <laughs> you can forget to eat because you're not hungry. So women bear the brunt of food insecurity. Women are more likely to experience food insecurity than men. More than uh, one in four Australian women, 27% have experienced food insecurity in the last 12 months. This compares to 18% of men. The experience of food insecurity can look quite different. Yep, we've read that again. So they're just repeating themselves. Mental health suffers, couldn't focus or concentrate. They feel tired, tired or lethargic. Well, yeah, yes. It's because, well, it depends. If they were to fast for a few period of days and they went to keto state, then they'd, they, all of this would go away. But they're probably not. They're probably eating lots of little things and insulin spiking themselves. So going all over the place. So you know when you get really tired in the afternoon, you need a coffee or a chocolate bar. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Women are more likely to report experiencing negative emotions as a result of food insecurity. Well, um, I mean, there's an ample opportunity to make sexist comments there about women and eating. I'm not going to, although I probably just did. You know, women who don't like chocolate, never trust. It's concerning. I hate when I can't cook proper meals and sit and eat with my ch child. She always asks why I'm not eating with her, but we don't always have enough food for both of us to eat. I'd rather miss out so she doesn't have to. Okay. Gen Y single mother. Okay, Gen Y single mother. A potato, butter, microwave, salt. That's a meal. That'll do. Then you'll sit down. If you can't afford that, what are you eating? How much is a potato? A couple of cents? You get that meal for a buck. A dollar. So this is the thing. This, I mean, to be, uh, let me know in the comments, am I being too harsh here? Are they, you know, how can you not afford a potato? How can you not afford one dollar? Is it, or is it, are they losing that much money? Or are they living that close to the edge? You know, do people who go and receive this, do they also receive financial counseling and advice? Is that, does that need to be a, a part of the food aid? Would that be a solution to this? Because I, I, fi I find that really hard to believe. I find that insanely hard to believe. You can buy a bag of potatoes for a few dollars and that can last. That's enough to keep you going. I mean, come on. Seriously. Oh, it, well. Wonder if she's got enough money for smokes or pokies. Okay, that, that's unfair. More than half of food insecure women have experienced domestic violence and single parenting. The events that make women vulnerable to food insecurity can also look different. Women experience food insecurity more likely than men who experience domestic violence. Yeah, we've read that. Um, I feel humili humiliated that someone with postgrad qualifications is trapped in domestic violence and can't get a job for more than eight hours per week. A Gen X woman in Brisbane. Well, you know, intimate partner violence is well it doesn't care what your degree is does it it does not and uh you know can't get your job options don't care what your degree of qualification is I, I don't really know what that's relevant to here it's probably more telling us more about the person it's, a, it's terrible that she's in this situation you know ipv situation but some you know there are for a woman there's many more support services than men that's the sad reality of it guys if you're a father and you want to leave with your children, there's ab absolutely no way you can escape domestic violence with your kids without them being removed from you. So that whole industry needs to be fixed. So what causes food insecurity? Let's have a look. The immediate causes of food insecurity. Top three immediate causes are unexpected bills, household living on a low income or pension, had to pay rent or mortgage. Okay, the cost of living is key cause of food insecurity in Australia, especially for those living on a low income. 
Almost half of Australians who have experienced food insecurity in the last year, 49%, have gone hungry due to an unexpected bill or expense. Two in five, 42%, have experienced food insecurity because they are living on low income or pension. Or one in three, 34%, have gone without food so they can pay their rent or their mortgage. Well, we know why these are expensive. Okay, and I will bring up a reference here. This is showing the amount of foreign investment in our housing sector, home approvals. Okay, that's overheated, that sector. It's that simple. It's nearly over 90%. It's overheated, that sector significantly. That drives up mortgages and that drives up rent. It's that simple, guys. And those figures, you know, the house part purchases and land purchase going up isn't factored into CPI. It's so half a percent higher. Unexpected bills or expenses, well, you can't really help that. Household living on a low income or pension, well, yeah. That, I mean, if you're on government assistance, yeah, you just gotta, you gotta scrape together, guys. It's tough. It's tough. I think the government needs to um, step away and reduce the costs of businesses so they can provide services cheaper. After I pay rent and electricity, oh, electricity. I wonder why electricity is so expensive. I wonder why electricity is so expensive. I'm left with hardly any money to buy food. I've gone days with no food just so my son can eat. Oh. Australians with a historic history of personal hardship are more vulnerable to food insecurity. So 70% have been unable to find work, 38% are single parents, 35% experience financial abuse, partner controlling or restricting access to finance, and 42% experience domestic violence. Who is more likely to experience food insecurity? Single parent households, parents, renters, Gen Z, Gen Y, women, and regional areas. So I've found articles where they're highlighting women are the most at risk. But really it's single parents, single parent house, households are far greater at risk, far greater. The influence of food insecurity on mental health. Well, yeah. Being unable to afford food takes a significant toll on an individual's mental and physical health. Many Australians struggle with food insecurity, feel tired or lethargic as a direct result of not having enough food. Around two in five, 41%, say their mental health has suffered or they've lost confidence. Food insecure Australians are five times as likely to experience psychological distress than the average Australian. Just one in 10 in Australia experience high or very high levels of psychological distress compared to 70% of food insecure Australia. It took me an enormous amount of courage to admit that we need help. I felt a lot of shame that I couldn't feed my children. I was worried I might get turned away thinking that I was, wasn't worse off enough to get help. Well, yes. Yeah. So which of these, if any, have you experienced as a result of not having enough food? Tired of lethargic, mental health, loss of confidence, unable to invite friends or family over, I couldn't focus or concentrate. So Australians struggling with food insecurity are less likely to feel they can talk to friends and family in times of need. That's that's really sad. That, that there, that is the one takeaway from all of this that shows there are some really big problems in our society in our civilization. You know, three quarters of Australian feel they can talk to friends and family are less likely to feel, yep. Three quarters of Australians feel they can talk to friends and family about what they're going through in times of need. This compares with 68% of Australians struggling with food insecurity. Food insecure Australians are even less likely to feel they can talk to their friends and family in situations when they run out of food and are un unable to purchase more. I mean, this is the thing. If you had a friend who you knew was going without to feed their kid, who would not bring them food? Let me know in the comments. Every person would, guaranteed. You would help your friend, you would help your neighbor. I mean, you'd go to the shop, buy a bag of potatoes and take it over to them. Go, here you go, buy some meat. You'd help out. Would you uh, let your parents, you know? You wouldn't let them go with that. Or your kids. Even if they were raising children, they got in tough times. So this this is the most concerning. This is showing you that we're having family breakdowns here in Australia. People can't talk to their own families for help. That is meant to be the unit that supports you. 
okay? In the past, it's the family that you, you depended on. Charity starts at home. The family took care of each other, took care of themselves. Not the state. Not the state. That's, that's, this here is what's most worrying in this entire report for me. That's concerning me the most. What do you think, guys? Let me know what you think. So, impacts of food relief. I went there when I was extremely depressed. I was embarrassed and felt worthless. The charity I went to was so friendly and helpful and alleviated a lot of anxiety and embarrassment for me. Well, yes, that makes, well, that's completely understandable. I mean, that, that looks good. Those uh, peas. It's actually making me quite, quite hungry there, the roast. So, food relief improves mental health and their barriers to seeking assistance. So every month, the charities that work with Food Bank provide relief to over 815,000 Australians experiencing food insecurity. While the main benefits of receiving food relief is feeling less hungry, 44%, many Australians ex experiencing food insecurity have also noticed improvements in their mental health. What are the barriers? Uh, I have not sought assistance from a charity in the last 12 months. Australians experiencing food insecurity are put off seeking assistance because they think there might be people who need assistance more than they do. 41%. Well, yeah, that's completely understandable. And then embarrassment and shame are also common barriers. Top five barriers. Someone else needs it more than me. Embarrassment, shame, it doesn't happen to me often enough to seek help. I prefer to ask help from those who are close to me. That should be number one. Oh, no, that's not a barrier. That's what most people are doing, you'd hope. So, here is the other issue, guys. Charities are struggling to meet the rising need for food relief. So, if Australia, if the economy is going fine, everyone's going well, it's all good, good, good. Why the hell are we having a rising need for food aid? Why? Come on. Despite the barriers to seeking assistance, three in five Australians experiencing food insecurity have sought assistance from a charity at least once in the last 12 months. Three in 10 seek assistance at least once a month. The number of Australians seeking food relief has increased by 22% over the last 12 months. With their current resources, less than two in five charities feel they are meeting the full needs of the people they assist. Here's a Gen Y mother in regional Queensland. A certain local charity delivered a whole heap of food which lasted a couple of weeks in which we were able to get on top of a bill that had been harassing us. It makes you feel so much happy and calmer knowing there wasn't going to be a knock on the door this week. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing. It's that stress that just eats at you and gnaws away at you. Maybe this is all people need. Just that little boost. That little boost to go. You know. They work with 2,400 charities, Northern Territory, WA, 30, 31,000 meals, it's up 27% in the NT, up 20% in WA, up 15% in SA, 24% up in Queensland, 23% in New South Wales ACT, 25 in Victoria, and 18% increase in Darwin. So, I'm not going to read through the methodology, the Kessler 10 question psychological distress scale, so there you go. So guys, I think this is giving us a very interesting insight into the you know, food aid in Australia. What does that tell you about the state of the country, where it's heading? It's gone up 22% in the last year. In the last year. So guys, like, share and subscribe. If you'd like to help me produce more content, I do have a Patreon and Subscribestar. And I appreciate all the help you provide, and I will talk to you all later. Take care, everyone.